All right, we're live. What's up? I got the music going. It is live, Grace Ministries. We're getting things cracking here. We are getting things loaded and ready to go. As you can see in here, we have some music playing in the background. That is from my original tracks that I have put together. Uh, so if any of you guys need any kind of music, hit me up. Let me know what is up because I can produce some music for you. So we're just getting things cranked up on the mixer. We've got our big book of love, that Bible, of course, and we've got our uh, here. Let me let me get this out here. We've got our coffee. We've got our mud, folks. We are ready and uh, cranking to go this morning on Valentine's Day. As I get. Uh, as I get everything loaded and ready to go here, uh, checking the mixer and the monitor and uh, see what's up. Um, so we are here. We're fired up. We're ready to go. It is uh, Valentine's Day, ladies and gentlemen. So somehow, I don't know how to do this, but there's a double tracking on this. When uh, when I try to go on uh, on the other camera here, so uh, hopefully you guys can get a reading. There we go. We got the monitor. We got the mixer. Uh, everything's tuned up. We're ready to go. Uh, we are firing on all cylinders this morning. Valentine's Day, my friends. What is up? How's it going? Life Grace Ministries, Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here on location uh, in the other studio. And uh, so we're just grateful, happy to be here, happy to get this message out. I got a lot going on. I got a lot to give you. And uh, hopefully you guys are going to be okay. And uh, well, I take that back. I know you're going to be okay. Not hopefully. You know, uh, we are, we're doing good here. We're, we're just rolling uh, right along this morning. And so I was trying to get, uh, I guess there's some kind of error in my monitor. But uh, I can see me. I don't know. Can you see me? I hope so. All right. So as, uh, now when I tried to do this before, what happened was it double, like there was a double voc uh, vocals or something like that. And uh, it, uh, it was not good. I could not get that uh, double stuff out of there. So I, I'm trying to figure out how to do all this stuff. Uh, hopefully it won't, uh, it won't mess up too much, but... We are live on the internet and uh, trying to maneuver this stuff up here. I don't know, folks. I just try to do what I can. And uh, it looks like we've got a live feed going on with the camera. And uh, hopefully, like I said, as I maneuver some of this stuff around, uh, it's very interesting. All right, so as we get this double live feed going on, um, it looks like it's kind of kicking in there. And I uh, got that live chat going on. So we are live. All right, so that works good. And uh, let's get the live camera on here. There we go. And uh, we're live. We're hitting it up this morning. We're chatting about God. We're giving God praise, honor, glory this morning. And uh, it was going to go on at about 11 o'clock. But, uh, you know, that uh, spirit kicked in and uh, said, Nah, you're going to go on right now. You're going to get this message out right now. Um, so I'm getting a Twitter set up. Uh, and uh, sending that message out. So hopefully you guys could join me here. We're we're kicking it in. We're good. And uh, let's get this message out. Uh, all right. So there we go. So as I hit the social media, uh, let me see if I can get around this thing for some 
reason. Um, it is, uh, it's not showing the video. Now, I'm trying to monitor this to make sure that I've got a good reading here. And uh, trying to uh, maneuver all my media stuff here going on. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is up? What's up with this, with you guys this morning? We are live. It's kicking in. I know it's there because I can see it. So there we go. The social media is up. I, uh, I'm trying to monitor everything, like I said. Hopefully you guys can hear me. And uh, as I keep going around the, the media circle here, uh, I want to make sure everything's up and running and uh, checking everything that's going on. So I will, uh, I'll get this thing running here and uh, kick this off and uh, see what happens here. So we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm live in your living room on your on your tablets, your phones, uh, anywhere you can see this message. Uh, amazing, folks. So there you go. Good morning. How are you doing? Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here live. Live Grace Ministries at, at Live Grace Ministries. There we go. Uh, in the uh, new location, other location, in the other studio and uh, we're just kicking it off. We're getting this message out on a special Valentine's Day uh, message, folks. Uh, glad you guys could be here with me. Uh, so I wanted to send a special shout out to my Facebook sisters, friends, and couples out there running around. Uh, stay in the Word of God, folks. I got a little bit of plug, a little bit of promotions to run off. So I am going to get just kick this off right quick with a message. You know what we do. Get your big book of love, your coffee. I uh, got your, uh, your uh, notebook, tablets, your pens, your papers, all that good stuff to get this message out, folks, because that's how we arm ourselves. And I'm going to give you the armor of God for sure. I got to get that out to you. Got to get some other messages out, folks. Just stay with God and uh, trust God. Even on my worst day, God is with me. There you go. All right. So it looks like we've got uh, we've got quite a bit going on. Social media is blowing up this morning, and uh, so we are we're kicking it off. Hopefully, I won't sneeze. I feel a sneeze coming on, folks. Oh, my God. It's been one of them days, one of them mornings. So, listen, I got some shout-outs, and I got a little bit of promotion for my podcast, folks. You know where that, all that stuff at. You can find me, Rabble TV, coming live back on the air here pretty quick, pretty soon. Um, hopefully, uh, I won't be blasting out here. Uh, I'm trying to get this uh, all the level. And there we go. We got a good level. But, uh, yeah, Rabble TV is coming back in March, but uh, I heard from the boss man that uh, it's going to be uh, a little bit sooner. I'm getting a little special preview uh, to kick that off. And I'll be going into the book of Daniel, the entire book, folks. How is that? And so I'm going to be kicking that off here pretty soon. That is going to be the next uh, read from the King James Version Bible, folks, that is what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to get. Uh, I'm going to read the entire book of the King of in the King James book of Daniel. So hold on and stay tuned for that, folks, because you're going to love it. If you haven't already read the book of Daniel, you got to check that out. All right, so you can always find me at live stream uh, producer or broadcaster.com anytime, anywhere. Add it, subscribe it, like it, check it out. Tell your friends and tell your family. I hope so. Ustream TV, Blog Talk Radio, Spreaker is another little uh, thing I'm working on. It's another podcast site, S P R E A K E R, Spreaker.com. Oh, God, we got to get that coffee going, folks we got to have that mud rolling. There we go. 
Uh, good. And, of course, my main channel at YouTube, Google Hangouts. Uh, now, folks, you know we did 150 shows already. So what I'm planning on is when I reach the 200th episode, my 200th live show here, and I'll be watching it, uh, we're going to go live stream Google Hangouts back at live, back at YouTube.com, uh, folks. Check it out, Life Christ Ministries at YouTube, Google Hangouts, add it, subscribe it, like it, and tell your friends, because, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get this message out. So there you go. We're also, Life Christ Ministries is also always available uh, 24-7, globally, internationally, worldwide, in all the countries now. At Facebook, Twitter, Skype, ULC Ministries Network, SoundCloud, MyCBN, Vivo, GodTube, Wix.com, Blueberry, Podbean, Podgarden, Podcast One, and TuneIn. You guys can always check that out. They're available. In fact, I just loaded up on GodTube. And uh, where are we at? Um, Daily Motion, which I did forget to write down. But check out Daily Motion. It's a pretty amazing uh, site. And so I just upgraded that. Uh, so you guys could go check that out. And uh, add it, like it, subscribe it. Also, a couple of shout-outs to some of my friends on the Internet. Uh, we're getting some things loaded up, ready to go. We're connected with Craig Day Ministries. Check him out, YouTube. Add, like, and subscribe, if you will. He is on uh, YouTube, Facebook, MyCBN, and Twitter. Well, we're getting a Twitter thing going on, but the other ones are there. Uh, we he's on uh, Rebel TV, Block Talk Radio, live stream, Ustream, and of course you know YouTube. Check it out, add it, like it, and my good friend in Chicago, Neil Render TV is available on Facebook, uh, my CBN, and YouTube. Uh, add it, like it, subscribe. He is in uh, Chicago. It's a, a great channel. Go ahead and add it. Uh, tell him I sent you. Uh, and also, my good friend Andrea in New York. Uh, she's available on my CBN. Uh, always a prayer warrior. Uh, so go ahead and uh, do that. Also, KWA 95.5 FM radio out in Ennis, Texas. Uh, as I'm just jogging notes here, uh, uh, good brother, good pastor with his wife, Rose. Uh, so I'm just plugging that station. KWA 95.5 Internet Radio. Uh, good pastor, J. David Ford and his wife, Rose. Uh, check it out. Go listen to it. It's inspirational to those that need inspiration from God, amen, check it out. It's cool. I like it. I dig it. All right, and my good friend, she is uh, in uh, podcast uh, connection. It's uh, Jessica Rhodes, Rhodes to Success, on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. She is, uh, it's uh, Interview Connection. It's a, a good podcast connector or connection with uh for podcasters people that are just getting started doing interviews setting up interviews now i've done about four of them so far uh globally worldwide international i'm get, about to get ready to do another one in japan konnichiwa uh domo arigato and uh appreciate you guys so much my family across the globe and also i've got another one i'm working with uh in uh new zealand and uh, I've got to get the information on that one. But uh, if I can find it real quick here, I've got a lot to cover, folks. It is uh, spreading the gospel all across the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, glad you guys. Where is it? I know, Holy Spirit. Come on, brother. I know you're there as uh, we get the information. Rodney W. Francis out in New Zealand. Uh, now, I've done messages quite a bit from him. 
um, connected to their internet, internet uh, national church that he's got out there as I get information from them. And uh, as I'm trying to find it, I know it's in here somewhere. I got this all kind of spread out and uh, set up. Oh, my goodness. I know where it is at, but I just can't locate it. Now, I'm going to have to mark that down here somewhere. But go check it out. It's uh, Rodney W. Francis. You can find him on the Internet. Uh, I got a lot of good information from him, a lot of uh, notes, stuff like that, some some, uh, information that I'd like to give you guys always. You know, and uh, I'll have to dig into that in a minute here. Uh, And I want to send a special, a couple of my CBN shout outs to uh, some friends of mine. Uh, Well, we've got uh, we've got Sophie uh, who's been struggling for this past year and a half. I'm sending prayers out to you, darling. Don't give up. We are praying for you constantly and always in prayer for you. And uh, you've made a lot of progress, so I'm proud of that, and I'm proud to be your friend. And uh, so we are keeping you, my friend Sophie, we are keeping you in our prayers. And uh, don't give up, because you got a lot of people fighting for you. you got a lot of people praying for you. Uh, and also my my friend, and, uh, uh, Dane, Dane, uh, and uh, Zaire. And uh, so we are sending out prayers to all of my CBN family, friends, and sisters that are on there. So check that out, folks. I have a mycbn.com site. You guys can check it out. Add it. Go uh, go look at it and uh, get some prayers on. You got to get your prayers on with my CBN, folks. All right. As I'm just going through a few messages, a few notes. Uh, I've got a devotional book, folks, I want to give you. Uh, I want to throw out a couple of them for you this morning. I'm glad you guys are here. It is early. Well, not too early. It might be early for some of you. But, you know, now, like I said, I was going to get this on about 11, but the Holy Spirit urged me on and said, nah, you need to go ahead and get on there now. And uh, get this message out to uh, those guys that are hurting, the families that are hurting. Uh, you know, it's a rough time, folks. We are struggling. We are having a hard time. So instead of my normal rant and rave that I usually do, I'm just going to get right into the word out of the devotional book that I've got. It's an older one. I like to give it to you just once in a while out of the blue, throw some scriptures at you, throw some devotionals. Inspiration, if you will. All right, so uh, Matthew six twenty six, your heavenly Father, God's people are doubly His children. They are His offspring, offspring by creation, and they are His sons by adoption in Christ. Hence, they are privileged to call Him our Father, which art in heaven. Father, what a precious word is that! Here is authority. If I be a father, where is mine honor? If ye be sons, where is your obedience? Here is affection mingled with authority, an authority which does not provoke rebellion, and obedience demanded, which is most cheerfully rendered, which would not be withheld even if it might. The obedience which God's children yield to him must be loving obedience. Do not go about the service of God as slaves to their taskmaster's toil. But run away, run in the way, there you go, of his commands because it is your father's way. Yield your bodies as instruments of righteousness because righteousness is your father's will and his will should be the will of his child, father. Here is a kingly attribute so sweetly veiled in love that the king's crown is forgotten in the king's face. 
And the scepter becomes not a rod of iron, but a silver scepter of mercy. The scepter indeed seems to be forgotten in the tender hand of him who wields it. Father, here is honor and love. How great is a father's love to his children, that which friendship cannot do, more benevolence will not attempt a father's heart, and hand must do for his sons. They are his offspring. He must bless them. They are his children. He must show himself strong in their defense. If an earthly father watches over his children with unceasing love and care, how much more does our Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, he who can say this hath uttered better music than cherubim or seraphim uh, can reach. This is heaven in depth of the word, Father, or that word, Father. There is all I can ask. All my necessities can demand, all my wishes can desire. I have all in all to eternity when I can say, Father. How cool is that, ladies and gentlemen? How precious is that? Uh, so let me go, let's see. Let me go over to... Uh, well, let me go see if I can jump over uh, over to this one here. Well, I'm going to just go stick. I'm going to see. I'm going to go over to this one in 2 Kings 25, 30, folks. Get your Bibles out. Come on now. We've got to, we've got to use that book, folks. Uh, it, it makes a great uh, coffee coaster, but that's not what God wants us to do with it. He wants us to read it. So dig it out. Get the dust off. I'll wait. I'll be sitting here. I got nowhere to go. I'm just going to be uh, reading through the scriptures here, folks. All right. You got it, brothers and sisters. Amen. And it says in 2 Kings 25, 30, And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king, a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. Uh, Sequoiakin was not sent away from the king's palace with a store to last him for months, but his provision was given him as a daily pension. Herein, he well pictures the happy position of all the Lord's people. A daily portion is all that a man really wants. We do not need tomorrow's supplies. That day has not yet dawned. And it wants, uh, it, and its wants are as yet unborn. The thirst which we may suffer in the month of June does not need to be quenched in February, for we do not feel it yet. If we have not or have enough for each day, as the days arrive, we shall never wa no want. Sufficient for the day is all that we can enjoy. We cannot eat or drink or wear more than a day's supply of food and raiment. The surplus gives us the care of storing it. And the anxiety of watching against a thief. One staff aids a traveler, but a bundle of staffs is heavy burden. Enough is not only as good as feast, but is all that we can truly enjoy. All right, so just checking real quick on my mixer make sure the sound was good here a craving for more than this is ungrateful when our father does not give us more we should be content with his daily allowance Jehoiakim's case is ours we have a share a sure portion a portion gives us of the king a gracious portion and a perpetual portion here is surely ground for thanksgiving or thankfulness. There we go. Beloved Christian, in matters of grace, you need a daily supply. You have no store of strength day by day. You must seek help from above. It is a very sweet assurance that a daily portion is provided for you. In the word, through the ministry, by meditation and prayer and waiting upon God, you shall receive renewed strength. In Jesus, 
All needful things are laid up for you. Then enjoy your continual allowance. Never go hungry while the daily bread of grace is on the table of mercy. Now, I'm telling you, folks, I'm loading you up this morning with uh, a plethora of information, grace, mercy, and inspiration that I hope you guys get this. And uh, as I try to find a place to put all my notes, I never know. I, I have a limited little window or spot here to put all my stuff uh, as I'm not at my usual desk. But I, I'm in uh, another, uh, another studio of ours at Life Grace Ministry Studios. Oh, my God. Well, I'm going to throw this one at you. Hopefully, I won't knock nothing over. Uh, as I'm coming out of the uh, King James Version, I love this this one here we got. Uh, out of Psalms 1, out of the big heavy-duty book, Blessed are the righteous. I always give this out. I always put this out there. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of, un- of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and... In his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, or whatsoever doth or doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Oh, we. That is uh, some duty. That is some heavy-duty stuff there, folks. All right. So I wanted to make sure I get that message out, folks. And uh, like I said, I'm going to give you a couple more. uh, A couple more inspirations, folks. There we go. And uh, I wanted to make sure you guys get all this message out. So have you found God? Uh, Are you still struggling with some things, folks? Now I'm going to just read off of this NLT Bible that I've got. Uh, Just briefly, just a a few points, five points here. Uh, Who is God, you ask? Thousands of years ago, Pharaoh, the Egyptian ruler, posed a question people are still asking today. Who is the Lord that I should listen to him? That's a good question, but it's not an easy subject to tackle. It is difficult for our limited minds to grasp the limitless, eternal God. Uh, It has been said, if God were small enough for your minds, he would be big enough for your needs. Did you catch that, friends? Oh, my God. That's pretty cool. All right. So just moving, maneuvering stuff up here. Um, if God were small enough for your minds, he wouldn't be big enough for your needs. For what reason? Don't be exasperated if you can't fully understand who God is or why he does certain things. One day, Scripture promises everything about God and his character will be made perfectly clear to us in 1 Corinthians thirteen twelve. But until then, we will find everything we need to know about him in his word. Look up the following notes in the passages to find out who God is. So let me see how many there are. I'm going to give you six of them. God is all-knowing, ever-present, and all-powerful. The creator of the universe knows every intimate detail of his creation. So if you look at Matthew 10, 29, and 31, folks, you'll find that. God is holy. God's incomparable holiness merits our worship. Revelation 15, 2, and 4. God is loving and just. God's justice is tempered by his love. Look at 2 Peter 3, 3, and 9. God is personal. This characteristic of God set him apart from the so-called gods of other religions in Acts 17, 22, 31. God is in control, family. It is important to remember that God is still in control, even if all things or things are around us seems to be in chaos. Look at Romans eleven thirty three through 36. The God of the Bible is the one true God. 
While some insist on the existence of many gods, only the God of the Bible is the true living God, worthy of our devotion. 1 Corinthians 8, 4, and 6. Now you ask, Minister, what is going on? Who is Jesus? Well, I'm going to give you that. So, hang on. I got something for you. Throughout history, many people have attempted to answer this question. Some have done so accurately, but many have not. Our best source for answering the question is, once again, God's own word. The Bible presents us with some inescapable, inescapable truths about Jesus that demand a response. Anyone who seriously studies Scripture to learn more about Jesus must answer two probing questions. What do you think of Jesus Christ? And who is he? Now the writer. Now hang on folks. I got to make some adjustments on my volume here. I want to make sure that uh, it's not blasting out here. I want to make sure things are set. So if it goes up and down. Sorry about that folks. I'll have to edit it. So the writer C.S. Lewis has made this observation. You must make your choice Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense. I almost had to stutter over that one. About his being a human or a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to mere Christianity and Reverend Ed New York and Macmillan. It's a 1952 book. Jesus was not just a good man. He was and is the good man. Let's examine what the Bible has to say about Jesus, shall we? Let's read into this, folks. Now, I'm going to explain this to you. I'm going to go into this. I'm going to get some scriptures set out, and uh, I'm going to give you uh, a little bit of messages here, folks. So, hang on. I got something to say this morning. Oh, and I forgot my shout-out to my good friend in, uh, in Oregon there, Portland. He's got a church there. Uh, Michael Holcomb, Better or Bible Days Ministries on iHeartRadio. Check him out. Uh, it's good, folks. A lot of inspiration in him. So, appreciate you, brother. God's got something to say. Yes, he does. I love that line. It's good. I, I just had to get that line out. I had to get that thing out. So, All right. Coming at you with some information about Jesus now. As you ask yourself, who is Jesus? Jesus is human. Jesus became our supreme example as God in human form. Now, see Philippians 2, 5, and 11. Folks, look that up. I told you I'm going to throw out some stuff at you. We're going deep. We're deep rooting the message. We're not just going to go shallow surfing preaching here, folks. Uh, when the Holy Spirit woke me up and said, this is what you're going to do. Okay. Well, this is what I'm doing. I'm deep rooting the message. Jesus is divine. Uh, even though Jesus became human, he still remained God. And uh Colossians 1 15, 20 Jesus had a specific mission to accomplish. Jesus came to save humankind from sin. Luke 4 16, 21 Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus endured tremendous pain so that we could enjoy eternity with him. Peter, 1 Peter 2 24 Jesus has great power to transform people. Jesus can change the most unlikely person uh, and to one of the most powerful witnesses on his behalf. Jesus has an eternal dominion. Jesus' kingdom extends beyond the boundaries of space and time in Revelation 1, 4, and 8. All right. So, listen, folks, we could go on in this. Uh, let me uh, I'm gonna get some coffee as uh, the social media uh, goes on. And, uh, my gosh, 
Um, so, all right, checking social media like crazy this morning. So you ask yourself, now I'm going to go in depth a little bit here. Who is the Holy Spirit? Uh, the Holy Spirit is the most mysterious member of the Trinity, which includes God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit. Many struggle with the idea of God being three persons, yet one, quite honestly, we will never fully grasp the concept this side of heaven. Some, however, have wrongly thought of the Holy Spirit as more of an it than a he. This is, that is probably due in part to biblical descriptions of him being like the wind or coming upon Jesus in the form of a dove. Among other comparisons, yet these descriptions must be balanced with the descriptions of the other members of the Trinity. Uh, for instance, Jesus referred to himself as the bread of life and the good shepherd. In the same way, God the Father is referred to as a refuge and a consuming fire. Does this mean that Jesus is a loaf of bread or a sheep farmer, or that the Father is a pile of rocks or a blast furnace? Of course not. There is simply metaphors used in scriptures to help communicate God's character. Likewise, the unique descriptions that attribute are attributed to the Holy Spirit do not imply that the Holy Spirit is merely some force or power. Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will tell you about the future. John sixteen thirteen. Note the use of the pronoun he. The Holy Spirit has a distinct personality and also the specific work that he wants to do in our lives as followers of Christ. Explore what the Bible says about him. Whom the Holy Spirit helps. The Holy Spirit strengthens and empowers followers of Christ. And if you look in Acts 2.141, how the Holy Spirit works with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit works alongside God, the Father and Jesus' is God's Son to make our lives pleasing to God. In 1 Peter 1.2, why God gives us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's presence in our lives is God's mark of ownership in Ephesians 1, 13, 14. How the Holy Spirit works in our lives. The Holy Spirit draws us to Christ, enters our lives at conversation, at conversion, not conversation, it's conversion, and empowers us uh, we allow him to work in our lives. John 14, 15, 17. When the Holy Spirit can be sinned against, there are six specific ways we can sin against the Holy Spirit in Acts 5, 1 and 10. Why Christians need the Holy Spirit. Living the Christian life is impossible without the Holy Spirit's help. In Galatians 5, 16, 26. Who is the devil? I'm going to get into this, folks. I'm going to give you this. i got to get this information to you, folks. And then I think I'm going to just go into some other scriptures. Uh, and then we'll continue this on the next episode. I've got a lot to give you, a lot to show. I'm just checking media. Hey, it's popping. Life Grace Ministries, Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here. We are just live on the Internet. And uh, giving you that word this morning, it is 11... What is it, 1120 already? Good grief. We're just waking up here. We're just getting a message out of God. Amen. Glad you guys are here checking it out. So who is the devil, you ask? What is the devil like? Does he really look like that red-suited, pitchfork-holding cartoon caricature seated on a throne in hell? Or does he roam through the earth disguised as an angel of light? Unfortunately, far too many... People do not have an accurate view of who the devil is. Many underestimate him and his prowess, even going so far as to doubt his very existence. Someone once asked the great evangelist Charles Finney, Mr. Finney, do you believe in a literal devil? Finney replied, you try opposing him for a while. 
if you see if it's he's literal or not, you will find out how literal the devil in the moment you make a comment to Jesus Christ. The Bible clearly shows us just how active and conniving the devil really is. At the same time, Scripture also lets us know about the devil's limitations and ultimate demise. The more we understand the tactics of his, this intelligent spirit being the better part or better equipped, we will be to ward off his attacks. Below are some key passages of Scripture. The, that answer, some of the most commonly asked questions about the devil, who is also referred to as Satan. Where did Satan come from? Satan's pride led to his fall from heaven in Revelations 12, 7, 9. What are Satan's abilities? Satan does have the power to access, to do certain things in this world. If you see 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and 4. What are Satan's limitations? While we should not underestimate Satan's power, we should realize that it is limited in 2 Timothy 4, 18. How does Satan attack people? Satan masterfully uses manipulation and distortion to deceive people. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13, and 15, folks, go check it out. It's there. How does Satan attack people? Satan masterfully, masterfully uses manipulation and distortion to deceive people. I said that. I wanted to give you that uh, again, 2 Corinthians 11, 13, and 15. Who can thwart Satan's agenda? Those who lay down their lives for Christ will defeat this evil foe in Revelations 12, 10, and 12. All right, folks. As I'm just looking out, we got a lot going on this morning. Like I said, I'm going to give you some power strength, some messages here. Uh, where are we at? I want to give you this for sure. May the Father bless you with a growing assurance of his great love for you. May his grace and mercy fill you with unending peace. May your heart grow ever more tender to spirits, to the Spirit's leading, and you may rest in the truth that he works all things together for good. In seasons of adversity and pain, may you be overwhelmed by his presence and protection, and may the companions of health and wisdom be yours in abundance. Out of Numbers 6, 24, 26, the Lord bless you and keep you, and the Lord make his face shine up on you and be gracious to you. Uh, the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. There we go. Trusting God means looking f beyond what we can see to what God sees. We do not lose heart, family. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now the key to peace, family. Be anxious for nothing but in everything in, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Remember, in the midst of life's storms, God's peace is like a fortress. Nothing comes your way without your Father's permission. The Lord's desire is to give you peace in every circumstance. And you can do it. If our confidence is found in Christ, we will not be swayed by our circumstances. True contentment is based on the person and not on what's going on around us. Amen. Well, there you go. I'm going to throw this one out because I got to. I have to. It's, we are more than conquerors, friends. Romans 8, 139 or 1 through 39, who shall separate us from the love of God or Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 
Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Put your trust in God, no matter what it looks like. You got to do that. That's the way it is. I know. Surrender yourselves completely to the Lord. Apply God's promises to your everyday life and trust Him no matter what comes your way. Receive, I say receive right now. I'm laying hands on you, folks. I am putting the Holy Spirit on you. I know. I'm starting to sound like a preacher. Can't help it. I just love what I'm doing. Receive what God has already provided. Be encouraged to keep your faith in God. No matter what obstacles... Uh, you face he God will turn your situations around if you believe and receive folks do you believe all right I am not a used car salesman but I know plenty on TV I got nothing against the TV sales I'm just saying John 10 27 30 and my sheep listen to his voice or my voice I know them and they follow me I give them eternal life and they shall never perish no one will snatch them out of my hand. Isaiah forty eleven. How our Lord cares for his sheep. How often he lifts us when we are low and supports us when we are weak. He gathers the lambs in him and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that are with young. And Psalms 91. I'm going to make this personal folks for you. Most high Elian. Under the shadow of the Almighty God, my refuge, my protection. He shall deliver thee. Do not be afraid. His uh, faithfulness will love your shield. <coughs> There's that cough. I was waiting for it all day. I knew it. Uh, he will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. Many may fall, but not you. He will come and his angels concerning you to guard you. Amen. You are protected from the dragon serpent, my friends. God acknowledges your name. I'm going to make this personal. Your name. And lifts you up. He will rescue and protect you. Amen. And that is from a good friend on Facebook. That's from Carrie. She, uh, she posted those up and I grabbed them and uh, used them. And um, so when we build our lives on the truth of God's word, we are building on an eternal foundation that cannot be destroyed. Psalms 139, 23 family. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Faith, the truth, and standards of the revealed words of God. Uh, Romans eight seventeen. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, check this out, folks. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we indeed suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And in 1 John 5, 13, 15, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now, here you go, folks. Do you hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning? God's word will not fail us. If we will not refuse to give up, Keep on standing on the rock of God's word and it won't let you down. God's word will not fail us. It is important for us to realize that after we have prayed an apparent delay in the answer, not hearing God's voice right away doesn't mean help isn't on the way. Wow. Powerful, folks. Powerful this morning. Uh, the sinner's prayer of salvation. I'm just going to give you a couple of them here. Romans 10, 9 and 10. 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and the mouth confesseth is made unto salvation. Well, now I'll just go into the rest of it here. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all, all that call upon his name. How cool is that? Uh, for so whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? Yeah, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words into all the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy, that are no people, and by the foolish nation. I will anger, or I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith all day, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands uh, unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Amen. As we go into uh, Craig Day, this is my brother over here at the ministries, uh, set this up. Uh, it is the sinner's prayer of salvation. This is the second part of it, folks. Go ahead and close your eyes. Go ahead and pray this prayer with me, folks, this morning. As I give you just a brief uh, hour or so message here this morning. As I've got another show tonight. I am getting on it, folks. It's time to attack back. It's time to get the devil back. Uh, you know, it's time we stand up, folks. we got to unite, stand up, and uh, get this message out. So every eyes closed, every head bowed, folks. Say this along with me if you want to receive Christ into your hearts. Uh, and uh, go from there, folks. And uh, trust me, it's good. Uh, I thank you for dying on the cross. Let's see, let's get backtrack here. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I confess with my mouth, I believe you are the Lord. And that God raised you from the dead. Please forgive me of my sins and wash my heart clean and come and live in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me to walk with you and live for you the rest of my life. Amen. Thank you for saving me and for giving me the gift of eternal life in heaven with you. Amen. And I confess that I am a sinner. I have prayed forgiving all those who have sinned against me. I ask for strength from the Lord to help me follow a path and lead others by the will of God. Amen. All our sins, past, present, and future, have been wiped away when Jesus died on the cross for us. Amen. All right. Well, there you go, folks. Welcome to the family of God. You have said that prayer. You have committed yourself to Christ. And you have given yourself to Christ. That's cool. Uh, so go ahead and hit me up, Life Grace Ministry sixty at gmail dot com at the official uh, email connection with Life Grace Ministries, folks. As uh, I'm just going over a couple of notes here, uh, so there you go. Now we will follow up with you, uh, continue to uh, teach you and show you. Uh, you know, how to uh, be a follower of Christ. Amen. I'm glad you guys are doing that. Glad you guys are committed here. And uh, appreciate that so much. All right. So we're still going here. Like I said, I'm just going to do about an hour or so brief message this morning. Just wanted to get that special Valentine's Day 
message uh, out to you guys. I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, grace is what God does. Faith is what we do. So like I said, I'm just throwing some scriptures out there. Uh, some power notes, some power scriptures here as uh, I continue to uh, look at my notes and stuff here. All right, so Isaiah, I think I read that already. We got that one going on. Um, I'm just going to throw some scriptures out, give you some uh, good messages here. Psalms 91, 4, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will rest. So Jesus is ever interceding on our behalf. That alone should embolden faith in him. And we can have immovable and unshakable confidence that he will be our anchor and our steadfast hope in the rolling tides and the crashing waves. He will see us safely through the storms of life and guide us to our safety. Amen. Uh, now I read this already. I'm going to give this again. John three fifteen eighteen. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that so whoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. And there we go. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Mercy. Good night. All right, so what do we got here? Well, you know, uh, you know, I got to throw some stuff out at you folks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the armor of God, folks, because we've got to have that on every single day. That is, uh, our, our, we have to do that, folks. We've got to get that, that armor of God on. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Uh, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching there unto, unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me... That utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. The armor of God, folks, you got to get that on there. And I want to give you this. For those of you that are going through fear and anxiety, folks, here you go. I'm going to give you some weapons here against the devil. Because he's a liar and he's trying to bring all of us down. And that's just not happening. That's not going to work. All right. So hopefully I won't lose nothing over here. I've got my whole stack of stuff sitting here. Try not to lose it. All right. The Father, how grateful I am for your awesome love for me. 
You know my fears and offer me your peace. Thank you for helping me overcome my apprehensions. Uh, Please reveal the origins of my fears so that they can be removed completely. I recognize that I am facing a faith battle today. Therefore, Lord, please continue to give me strength and encourage me with your word. Show me who you are so I can stand strong against these fears and declare in faith, my God is wiser, more loving, and more powerful than any problem I will ever face. Day by day, help me to place my focus on your faithful character and unfailing principles so that I can be a person of courage and conviction. Thank you, Father, for helping me lay down my fears on the basis of who you are. And what you have promised me, I do not have to be afraid because you are always with me. You are my God and you will strengthen and uphold me with your righteous right hand. Truly, you are worthy of all the honor, praise, glory, power. Amen. My soul rests in you, Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Well, there you go, folks. Now you have said the fear prayer and you are armed with the armor of God, folks. How cool is that? Uh, Be inspired, folks. Come on, you got to be inspired. God has given us life and we cannot have uh, we cannot have that spirit of fear. I believe this one is Philippians 4, 1 through 13. Let me get some coffee, folks. You know I got to have that mud flowing this morning. I didn't need breakfast yet. I just got up so full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it was like I said, folks, I was going to do this about 11. I was going to kind of put this off, do a little bit of things, kind of relax a little bit. But the Holy Spirit came and he said, no, my child, my son, you're going to get this message out right now. Go And get this message out. Speak to all nations. So, I got to have my mud. And there you go. You know, I used to say this. You get your big book or big cup of love first. Then your big book of love. But we should always have that big book of love, folks. We should always have our Bible there. Dust it off. Clean it off. I'll wait. Okay, I'm glad you got it. You got it good. So, you got your big book of love. You got your coffee. Now, the Bible should come first before your coffee. You know how we roll up in this house, folks. You know, like I said, I always said, now, my pastors have taught me well. Uh, we have not, we're not given the spirit of fear. So, I know, you're sitting there, minister, you're all over the board here. I can't help it. I'm excited about getting this word out. I love doing this. I know I got to get more motivated and do this every day, but you know, life happens, folks. Things happen. You got to kind of balance it, folks. But I, I trust me, as long as I can get internet, as long as I can get a, a outlet and Wi-Fi, I'm going to keep these messages going because I know they're inspiring you and that inspires me to keep bringing this word. So when Rabble TV gets back on the air, folks, I'm going into the entire book of Daniel. And I think what I want to do, now, the Holy Spirit may correct me on this, and I'm sure it will. I'm sure he will. Okay, the Holy Spirit is listening. He's hearing everything. He's tapping me on the shoulder going, yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm going to go into the book of Genesis. Now, after I finish Daniel, I'm going to see where the Holy Spirit leads me to. But I believe I'm going to go back into Genesis, into the Old Testament. Uh, I believe it's time. Because I've already done Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I've already done Ezekiel. I've already done Exodus. And I've already done Revelations. And so as we get into the book of Daniel, that's coming next, folks. So stay tuned to Rabble TV when they get back on the air. They get their updates and their upgrades already set up. That is where I'm going into the entire book of uh, the book of Daniel out of the King James Version. It's going to be cool. So stay tuned. Watch uh, now. You know I'm on Facebook and Twitter, so and YouTube, of course. Everything's loaded up to Facebook and YouTube, all that stuff. So, anyway, so you guys know now. Uh, like I said, I just get these messages. I got to get this out. I, I this is my job. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. 
uh, doing. That would be choking on coffee. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Well, like I said, I'm not real professional. Hey, this is probably really odd and really different for most of you guys. You're cruising through YouTube and you see some crazy guy preaching the Bible, the word, giving you the message. Well, it's a Holy Spirit calling. Uh, as I was really woken up, uh, like I said a few times in, in the past podcast, you can just check that out. But uh, it's not me doing this, folks. Like I said, this is all Holy Spirit led. Regardless of the negative comments, regardless of people knocking me down, saying this ain't a job, it's okay. You'll get it later on, but I got it right now. And this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be getting this message out. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I got to do. All right, so let's get back to the scripture. Good grief, we're over an hour here. Cutting it off here pretty soon. Philippians 4, 1 through 13. Therefore, my beloved, and long for beloved, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, beloved. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with, uh, within the gospel, with Clement, also and with other my fellow laborers, whose name are in and written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayers and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds focused on Christ Jesus. Amen. I put that focus part in there. That's what you got to do. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. All right. So here, this is another message. The fruits of the, the charge to preach, the fruits of the Spirit. 2 Timothy 4, 2 and 5. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, and uh, with all long-suffering doctrine for the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away ears from the truth. It shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make proof of thy ministry. Kind of threw some scriptures out for myself too as folks. You know, like I said, I always get uh, a lot of messages with, with this, with what I'm doing. Uh, so you guys, this isn't just for you. I mean, this is mainly what I'm doing. This is 99.9% of what I'm doing this for is you guys. But I do get some of this. Oh, well, all of it, I guess. All of it. I would say I would get all of it just as well as you guys do. So I appreciate you guys getting that subscription and liking that button. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not selling anything. I don't even know how to market what I'm doing. But I am trying to save souls. I am trying to uh, give you guys information. If you can't get to church, I'm going to bring the church and the message right to you. To the least, the last, and the lost of this world, folks. If you're, if you're uh, struggling with the Word of God, folks, I'm going to try to get you or give you information and save souls, folks. I'm dropping supplies uh, to all nations. Amen. Be inspired by the Word of God, folks. That's what we got to do. Be inspired by the Word of God. Receive what He has already given us. Amen. So what do we got? On the, now, now, this is... I'm going to go back into Mark 15, 33 and 34. When we get feeling like there is no God, God does not exist, God is not even in the picture anymore, um, there's a few scriptures I can give you. You know where to go, folks. I've g- been giving you this for a while now. So I have been kind of turned into a different uh, direction sometimes and, uh, you know, into the messages and the scriptures and stuff like that. So I'm going to read Mark 30, uh, 15, 33. 
34, when you're feeling all alone and you're feeling like God's just not there, like he just doesn't hear you quick enough to answer. I know there's a lot of my friends out there that are struggling with this. There, there's a lot of hurt and pain, a lot of darkness, a lot of brokenness in your souls, in your hearts, in your minds. We have to be renewed or uh, what is it? Transferred, uh, transformed by the renewing of your minds. And I'll get to that scripture in a minute here, folks. But Mark 15, 33, 34, Jesus on the cross when the spirit departed the body became flesh. And when the sixth hour come, there was darkness over the whole world, the whole land, until the ninth hour. So he's on the cross for three hours. Now in Hebrew, and at the ninth hour, Jesus Christ, with a loud voice, cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabak, tani. And we know the translation, friends. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, if that don't shake you up, I don't know what else will. So, when you're feeling left alone and you're feeling in the dark, folks, this is what Jesus went through as a flesh on the cross. As he was dying, he had the stakes in his hands, the nails in his hands. And this is hard for me to get through, but I'm going to get through it because God does not give us the spirit of fear. This is the passion that you guys should have for him. Everything he's done, everything he's given, breath of life. Even if he seems so far away that you can't even, you don't even know who he is. Folks, I'm bringing you back to it. That's the passion that you got to have for him. We got to thank him every day. If you guys notice, now you guys notice on my Twitter, I thank God every day. No matter what I go through, no matter what it looks like, you can't go by your five senses. You got to have that passion, folks. That's what I'm here for. That's the mission. Romans 5, 1, also 18 through 21, folks. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through who also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance, character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given us. Amen. So there you go. I'm just throwing some power notes out there, folks. Yeah, what do we got? A little bit more. We're going to close out here real soon. 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 6 and 10, 13. Being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of, Christ, of Jesus Christ no man that worth entangleth myself with the affairs of the life that we may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except that strive lawfully. The husband man that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruit. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we, believe, if we be dead, we shall also live with him. We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny you. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. 1 John 4, 121, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. 
And that is that spirit of the Antichrist. Where of ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greatness is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. God is love. 1 John 4, 121, I believe I did this. I'm going to give this to you again, folks, because I got to. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth God. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that if he loved us, and sent his son to be the propitiation, propitiation, substitute sacrifice for our sins, past, present, and future. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and is perfected in us. Hereby know that we dwell in him and in he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that if the father sent the son to be the savior of the world whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God uh, God dwelleth in him and he in God and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us God is love and he that dwelleth in God and God in him here in is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he as he is so are we in this world therefore is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth uh, God love his brother also. Amen. Wow. Talk about a powerful message. Are you inspired this morning, folks? Have you given God a chance? You know, uh, you gotta, you gotta give Him a chance, folks. You gotta, you gotta, you know, because like I always say to him, I always say this myself. Okay, so you tried things your way. How'd that work out for you? You think you can handle life on your own without God? I don't think so. I know personally for experience for me, I certainly can't handle it. And I know you guys out there, you think you can. You're running around on your own uh, thinking one way, but you know in the bottom of your heart, in the pit of your heart, you know God's calling you. So I guess, you know, like somebody told me, you got to hit rock bottom. You got to get through it to get to, to do it or something like that. You know what I'm saying, folks. All right, so I'm just going to do a couple more here. Acts 2, 14, 42. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and our sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaidens will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above the sign, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vaporous smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon in blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. 
And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Wow. Talk about powerful, folks. That's what I'm giving you. It is Life Grace Ministries, Minister Preacher Rick Rowley, giving you the Power Hour message for Valentine's Day. Hello, world. Hello, people. How you doing? All right, glad you guys could be with me. We're wrapping it up here because I've got another show to set up. I was supposed to get on Block Talk Radio this morning, and uh, because of appointments and stuff, I have to reschedule that. I got to go back on there. But I'm glad, I'm glad and happy to be here with you this morning at live stream broadcaster, folks. Uh, I'm going to upload this podcast over to my YouTube channel. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you will because uh, I love it. God loves it. God says, Thank you for watching, tuning in to Life Grace Ministries. I know I'm like there's a million of us. There's a million podcasts out there. I'm I, listen. This is all Holy Spirit led. I'm not making this stuff up. I, I don't go by scripts. Uh, this isn't edited. This isn't like I don't throw this stuff into an editor. Uh, I don't have a crew. I don't have a, you know a, a team here, folks. I, I've got contacts i've got great friends that are supportive of what i'm doing and uh so i always try to give a shout out to each and every one of them before and after the shows if i forget after you know you can always go to the beginning of the podcast and go go check it out uh so that intro music by the way ps here postscript here whatever you want to call it that intro was a song called nephilim uh that i'm working on an album called poetic fire so any of you guys need any kind of original uh, arrangements, uh, any kind of intro music, folks, I, I give me a call. Message me. Let me know what's up. I will uh, come up with something. I, you know, God has given me the inspiration, and uh, it's, it's cool. I love doing that, and I, I, can, I can put some stuff for you, intro stuff. All right, so that's enough of that. I just wanted to get that out there. Possess the promise, my friends. God's word says it is his will to heal us. And through Jesus' death on Calvary and resurrection, the price for sin has been paid for and sickness has been borne away. Uh, as you walk with God, I'm going to close out with this here. As you walk with God, take time every day to thank him for the gift of healing that he's already given us. Through Jesus Christ and know that like any other God, it is ours freely. They're talking about grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved, it's a free gift of God. All we have to do is accept it and by faith possess the healing God has promised us in Isaiah 53, 4-5. Now know what belongs to you. God doesn't want us to wonder whether it is His will that we be healed. He wants us to know what His Word says about it in Christ. We are already healed by His stripes. And we let his word build up our faith for healing whenever we need it. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. In whom shall I be afraid? Well, there you go. All right, so I guess here what I'll do is I'll just read this last one here. I got so many, I didn't even know where to start. Um, now, I read that one. I gave you that one. And I want to make sure I don't kind of repeat myself here. All right. So, I want to make sure I get you this stuff. We are anointed to hear one of the purposes for the necessity of each believer to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit is that we might be able to hear the voice of God in this hour. That we move in the direction He has chosen for us in Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 11, or 1, 1, 2, are we also exhorted to have an ear to hear what the spirits are saying into the churches? Amen. All right, so I got another one I want to actually close out with. 
Psalms 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life, is my strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Huh? Well, let's see. Let's get this over here. I know I got a lot. I got a lot of stuff. Oh, my gosh, folks. I have gained so much information. It's not even funny. I have not kidding. Um, as I try to maneuver, hang on, folks. Like I said, I, I this is always fun uh, trying to maneuver uh, my books and stuff and my my messages. As I I don't have my desk with me this morning, and uh, so that's why it's a little awkward here. Uh, I've got stuff spread all over the place, and uh, so I'm I'm trying to really kind of set this up here, folks, to get this message out to you. So let me see where did I put it? Oh um, my gosh! I've got so much stuff spread all over the place, folks. It's not even funny. Like I said, I uh, it's not that one. I want to get this message out to you. I believe it's somewhere in this thing here in my pile. Um, I've got. Uh, let's see. Well, that's one prayer I can give you guys. Close out here as uh, we're getting this thing out. Um, where did it go? Oh, my gosh. I know this is going to be crazy. When you look at this thing, it's going to be all weird, especially towards the end of the show. Um, I had this really cool prayer that I was trying to find, and I had this already picked out and ready to go. But uh, apparently, uh, it's not it's not in my list of where I normally have it. So I'm not. I I know it's in here somewhere, folks. I know you guys are looking at me crazy, like oh my god. There we there we go. Like I said, I I have got so many uh, amazing notes that I don't even know where to start, folks. I uh, I've got all this stuff spread all over the place. And like I said, I don't have my, I'm not at my normal desk here, uh, but I am going to give you this. I think I'm just going to go ahead and close out with this one, folks. Um, all right, so here we go. Hope you're inspired. Glad you guys are here. Glad for that little mix up here. Uh, sorry about that little thing here. Good morning. We are in the morning here. At different seasons, there are different anointings that I give to my children. And in this season, says the Spirit, there will be upon some of my people to anointing, the anointing to run with horses and outrun men. There will be upon some of my people the Elijah anointing. That anointing that outruns everything else. That anointing is upon those who have sought my face diligently. Who have pursued me irregardless of everything that is going on in their lives. They have carved out a place and put me first in their hearts. And it has grown bigger and bigger. Instead of decreasing, they are increasing in their love for me. Because of that, says the Lord, I am increasing my anointing upon you. You will be able to do things that you thought was impossible for you to walk in, for you to see, or for you to do. I have anointed flesh your hand or fresh your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears, your body, yes, that body that was given out unto you. I have anointed it fresh, says the Lord. You will have the ability to soar as an eagle does, when it sets upon itself upon a high place and beats of the old to carve out that new fresh eagle. So I am saying to you, huh, really, I am saying to you, a new fresh eagle has appeared in your body, in your being, in your mind, and in your heart, says the Lord. You shall run fast and soar beyond your expectation because a supernatural anointing rests upon you even now for those who will receive it they will go forth in a fresh new anointing and not be stopped by the lies of the enemy this is my anointing it is for those in the end times so they 
not only endure, but they excel. Get ready, says the Lord, for the eagle anointing to rest upon you. Amen. So I'm just checking uh, the media. Like I said, it's blowing up. Glad you guys are there. Grateful. Uh, all those uh, new guys that are uh, new people that are, are checking out the YouTube site. Praying for my friends, Sophia or Sophie. I know I get that mixed up. It's Sophie. You guys, you know who I'm talking about. Don't give up. You know, we love you. We're ta- we, you know, we're praying for you. We're keeping prayers. Now, that's my other friend, Sophia, that I have on uh, my Twitter. Uh, I, I know she's over in Italy. It's great. I, I'm glad to be talking to everybody. So, I'm praying for my friend, Sophie, and my friend, Sophia, and all my friends and family all across the globe, all across the world. Glad you guys could be with me. I know I try not to stumble, but sometimes I get so caught up in this, I get stumbled here. So, glad you guys are here. Glad you guys uh, are, appreciate you guys jumping in there, joining me. Um, Now, I'm going to close this out real quick here. But those who wait in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and in faith. And it faith. Isaiah 40, 31. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out exploits. Great exploits. Daniel 11.32 But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have anointed with fresh oil in Psalms 92.10 All right. Okay, so getting past all the stumbles, folks. Appreciate that. Appreciate you guys uh, hanging out uh, for a little bit of time here this morning. On a Valentine's special message day here, folks. That's what I'm getting at. All right. I got another show to do. I have got some more information to get. I've got some more notes to take care of. Uh, You guys take it easy. Uh, Blessings and shalom. Uh, Life Grace Ministries, don't forget to join me over at, coming up soon here, Rabble TV. Uh, It looks like March, uh, around March is the due date here. Uh, but we will be up earlier. He's uh, the boss man has said that we uh, we're, he's going to do some previews here. Live stream always at Ustream TV, Block Talk Radio, Spreaker. Always at YouTube, GoogleHangouts.com. You guys can check that out. And available all the time, archived over uh, at Facebook, Twitter, Skype, ULC Ministers Network. SoundCloud, MyCBN, Vivo, GodTube, Wix.com, Blueberry, Podbean, Podgarden, Podcast One, TuneIn, and Daily Motion. I had to plug those folks. I got to get those out there. We are also connected with Craig Day Ministries over YouTube. My good friend, my painter friend, Nancy, you know who you are. I uh, go check her out. We're we're getting the site up. We're getting the site built up. We're gonna do some paintings on there. So that's just plugging my good friend here, Neil Render TV in Chicago. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, KWA ninety five point five FM radio, internet radio. My good brother, Pastor J David Ford and his wife. Check it out, you guys. Go look at it. It's awesome. And my good friend Jessica Rhodes at. Uh, interview connections out of uh, Connecticut there. Roads to Success on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Now, I'll be adding some more people here, some more folks, some more uh, support that I've got uh, in the ministry thing that i got going on. Uh, you guys are awesome. Appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to go take care of my throat. I'm losing my voice here, I think. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. not going to. Give the devil that kind of power and that kind of control. Uh, he's trying to kill off my podcast, and I'm not going to let it happen. He did that before, and I shut down. But I'm not going to do it again. All right, so let me close out. Let me get a little bit of music going on. And uh, see if I can get that rolling here. A little bit. My connectors, you know, I've got weird connections on this thing. So there we go. Well, it's kind of cutting in and out here, folks. But There we go. What do you think of that? Let me know if you can hear it. It's at the beginning of the show. So, there we go. I got a little bit of cue on it. 
That is Nephilim off the new Poetic Fire album and also the new Fall of Eden CD that I've got recording. If you guys can hear that, let me know what you think. Uh, I write all kinds of original music. Uh, I'm just putting that out there as an intro and an outro to Life Grace Ministries. Minister Preacher Rick Raleigh. We are live, going live tonight later on uh, from a new location. So I appreciate you guys being here. That is Life Grace Ministries. Minister Preacher Rick Raleigh. We are here. All right. I'm going to close this out, folks. I hope this is you tonight. All right, that'll do it. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.